Chris Poulos, so you start off knocking on doors. What went through your head before that first walk up to a door to knock on that door? Well, you know, just to start, um, we knew this campaign was going to be an uphill climb. Um, Southington, where we live, is a, uh, a pretty Republican area. And our, our approach was to get out and get as much voter contact as possible. So I was excited. Um, I previously served on the town council, and I, and I had some experience knocking doors. And, you know, it's tough to motivate to get out of your house to get to that first door. But once you get out there and you start knocking, you get into a rhythm. And it was uh, it's just inspiring to talk to people and to hear their stories, to hear what keeps them up at night, and to talk to them about what their hopes are for the future. And so um, once started, we just kept going. It was and, great. And as a high school teacher, you must have been knocking on a lot of doors where you knew the people who opened those doors. Yeah, I, I, I did know a lot of people uh, knocking the doors. And I actually teach in a different district than than where I uh, than where I where I ran for office, but having served previously uh, on the town council in town, um, a lot of people re remembered me from from past elections, and uh, we talked all about our town. I grew up here. We talked about uh, the way things used to be, the way things are, and and the way things we we, we hope be envisioned for, for the future. Senator Murphy, uh, so you you knocked on those doors uh, some years ago. Uh, what was it like for you watching this campaign develop? And I'm sure you had an eye on it uh, when those returns were coming in and looking at, uh, you know, an, an area where you always had to win those votes, too. Uh, did did it feel to you like this was going to be this close uh, well, I, I had hoped it would be this close. You know, there's two differences between the race that I ran you know, two decades ago and the race that Chris ran. One, um, when I ran, this town was a little bit more Democratic leaning. Um, uh, today, as he mentioned, it voted for Donald Trump in the last presidential election. Um, but second, I didn't know anybody in Southington because I had just moved there a couple of years previous. And so I was truly introducing myself to everybody uh, that I met. Um, but, um, you know, when I met Chris, um, you know, you know, I, I saw the fire in his eyes. This is not an easy thing for him to do. He's got two kids the same age as my kids. As he mentioned, he t teaches in a district the opposite direction from Hartford. And so this is a big sacrifice to decide to run for office. It's a part-time job in Connecticut. You have to hold down another job. But he was so committed to the future of uh, Southington and the future of the state that he made this enormous commitment to go out and knock on 5,300 doors. And when you meet him, you know, you, you realize why um, he did so well, um, because he's willing to work with anybody. Uh, he just cares about people. And you saw he got a lot of crossover votes from Republicans. It shows how, you know, candidates hard work really still um, can't be beat. It's the it's the it's the irreplaceable factor in American politics. OK, Senator, uh, what advice do you have uh, for the man who will be taking this position that you used to hold? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I just uh, I hope he's going to keep knocking doors because, uh, you know, the, the one thing you need to do is stay totally connected to the people that you represent. And so, you know, I never stopped knocking doors, um, even when it was an election season. And I think he's going to show up at the state capitol with a better sense of what Southington cares about uh, because he talked to 5,300 people. And I think you just stay at it. That way you never get disconnected from what people care about. Uh, Chris Poulos, uh, the, I, I'm, I'm concerned about Connecticut losing a teacher of the year uh, to go into state government. What happens to your students? Well, you know, before I, uh, when I was encouraged to seek the nomination, before I did so, I sat down first with my family, but then with my principal and my superintendent. And we talked about the prospect of being elected. And they said, we're going to make it work. For me, it's important that in some capacity, I continue to teach. I think that gives me credibility. When I talk about children and families, I could speak firsthand from that position as a parent and also as a teacher. And so we're working on a plan that will allow me to stay in the classroom when the legislature is out of session and when the legislature is in session, um, how I can still have a presence at my school uh, on the days that I have a lighter load up there in Hartford.